You know where else is 24 hours? Anybody here been to Las Vegas at all? Anybody been there? Anybody there? Yeah, you've been there? Yeah. Rabbi's been there. It's good to see you. It's good you're using those funds real good there uh, in Las Vegas. I'll be leaving on the midnight plane to Vegas after this one time. I actually love the black hat rabbis. You know, I always wondered about them. When they go out at night, like everyone else, do they ask their wives what they should wear? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, what should I wear? What about the black hat? The black jacket, black pants, black shoes, and a white shirt, and a tie with soup on it. What about that? <laughs> Do you ever go to one of these really big Chabad functions where there's like hundreds of these rabbis and you're talking to one, he says, excuse me a minute, and you can't remember which one you're talking to? Is it that one or that one? They all have the same beard. What's going on here? I have no idea. But I was in Las Vegas uh, not too long ago. Everything is 24 hours. They have 24 hour jewelry stores. Who wakes up 3.30 in the morning and goes, I need a Rolex. <laughs> they had a store, this thing, I saw a sign, it's a 24 hour family restaurant. What kind of lunatic families go out 4 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Some psycho father, all right, everyone out of bed. <laughs> it's 4 o'clock, we're a family, we're going out for eggs. <laughs> then we'll go to the jewelry store, the supermarket. We'll be back in bed by 5.30 and start drinking again. Let's go. Let's move it. Let's have a good time here. But I do live out in Los Angeles, and uh, I'm originally from the East Coast. I grew up here. I used to live in the Bronx and in uh, Forest Hills. And, yeah. Bronx people here at all? Yeah. Really? All right. From the Bronx, sir? Yes. Yeah, he's still there? Where are you now? Rockland County. Rockland County. Very nice. Very nice. Big difference. <laughs> I was in a 6 floor walk up with no heat. <laughs> My parents were doing well. <laughs> but I do live out in Los Angeles now. One of the differences we have out there, we have the earthquakes, you don't have them here. And I was in one a couple of years ago. Thank God we we're okay. But my uncle lived in a trailer park, over 100 trailers, completely destroyed, over $60 worth of damage. It was very sad. <laughs> How do people, how do people decide to live in a trailer? What do they walk into the back of a truck one day, look around and go, oh yeah, this is fantastic. I put a chair and I'm set for the rest of my life. I can never live in a place where if someone is sitting next to me on the couch, my house might tip over. Or if I'm taking a bath and I'm thirsty, I can reach into the kitchen from the tub. And if you watch TV, these trailer people are always killing each other, just murdering each other. I guess after you live with somebody for 11 years in one room, you look at them one day and go, I'm taking you out this afternoon. <laughs> when I married you, I had three teeth and look at you now. <laughs> so good. But I did grow up here in New York and I, I used to live with my parents here until they moved out at their own place. And uh, <laughs> my grandparents lived with us when I was growing up. Let me tell you something. Grandfathers, grand, grandparents have stories you cannot prove. My grandfather told me, he told me he moved to the United States when he was two, by himself. In those days, you looked at parents and said, Mom and Pop, I'm two. I'm out of here. Three years old, got a job putting in high voltage wires for them. He came from the old country. Where is this place? I looked on every map in the world. There is no old country. What is it, a country with just old people walking around? My grandparents, when you're a kid, this is true, grandparents like to give the grandkids money, but they never just hand it to you, they always slip it to you like it's illegal. <laughs> like they're selling you dope or something. Everybody leaves the room, my grandfather's like, put this in your pocket, keep your mouth closed. <laughs> just put it away, you don't know where you got it, right? <laughs> don't say anything, you have no idea where you got this. If your mother asks, you found it. Just lie, just keep lying. <laughs> There's two dollars, go to college, don't worry about it. <laughs> when I was a kid, two dollars was a lot of money. My allowance was 50 cents a week. I remember asking my, my father for a raise once. I said, Dad, can I have a raise? He said, I'm sorry, we can't afford it. I said, then get another job. <laughs> I'm getting 50 cents a week here, what's the deal? <laughs> my mother hated cleaning up anything. Always said the same thing when I was a kid. You know, Mark, I am not your maid. In my head, I'm thinking, yes, you are. <laughs> Somebody's been cleaning up, it hasn't been me. I actually said to her once, you are my mate, get me a hamburger. She told my father, he said, sounds great, get me one too. <laughs> Some of the most fun we had when I was a kid was when the whole family would go in the car, that was the best. But before you go in the car though, my mother would talk to me like I'd never heard of a car. 
She goes, we are, Mark. We're going in the car. So if you want to go to the bathroom, go now. You hear me? Go now. Because once your father starts the car, that's it. We're driving straight to Bulgaria today. You cannot stop. If you're not going to be good, tell me right now, and we'll just leave you home. Because I have a splitting headache. Mothers never have regular headaches. <laughs> never. My mother never had a regular headache in her life. My mother only had a splitting headache. And she would yell, I have a splitting headache. Couldn't be from yelling 11 hours a day, could it? That could be part of the problem. My mother would wake up, I have a headache. You're making it worse. Stop here, get it! My father's in the other room going, both of you give me a headache. And my mother would threaten me when I was a kid, boy. You could really threaten your kids. When I was growing up, you could really threaten me. You can't threaten your kids anymore. They'll sue you. Look at a lawyer, they'll take you to court. When I was a kid, my mother would say things like, go ahead, touch that door, I will break your hands off. Open your mouth again, I'll rip the tongue right out of your head. Get in here right now, or I will break every bone in your body. If I have to come in there, I will kill you. That was love, ladies and gentlemen. My mother threatened to rip the tongue out of my head. I knew she cared. And my mother was a very confused woman, incredibly confused. My mother did not think that I had any idea who she was. She really did not believe I, think I knew who she was, because she would say to me, who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> who do you think you're talking to? Do you have any idea who I am? <laughs> I am your mother. Do you realize that? I don't think so. Otherwise, you wouldn't act like this. And she didn't think I knew who I was. She thought I was as confused as her, because she looked at me and go, who do you think you are? My child doesn't act like that. And I'm six years old, I'm thinking, she doesn't know me, he doesn't know me. I'm getting 50 cents a week, it ain't worth hanging around. I'm going to the old country, I'm out of here. Thank you, yes, thank you. And my kids now, I can, I, my kids have been all over the world. I've been in Israel six times, I've been in Italy. Been right in New York, everywhere you can imagine in the world. I didn't go anywhere. My parents didn't take me anywhere when I was a kid. I'd say to my mother, I'm going out. You're not going anywhere. I just want to go out for a while. You're not going. I'm locked in here. You're staying in here with me. Do you know what my mother would say to me sometimes? You go out, but stand in front of the house and don't move. It was like she was waiting for somebody to just swoop me up in a car. I'm standing there in my little short pants. Just stand there and don't move. I'm watching. If you move, you're coming right back in. Anyway, going for rides in the car, that was great. I would, you know, I, would, I used to like to get in the car a few seconds over my folks and I would turn that radio all the way up. So my father started the engine and blow the hair right off his head. Boom! It's starting already. And I sat in the back of the car, I swear, the dog could sit in the front. The dog would sit on my mother's lap and hang his head out the window. I'd sit in the back and hit the face with dog spin at 90 miles an hour. I'm going, Mark, I'm going up. And dogs are the best. You can do anything you want to your dog and they love you. I used to take my dog's nose, put it in my mouth, and try to blow the dog up. <laughs> Just take that big snoo, like, watch him sneeze for an hour. <laughs> and the only time he tried to bite me is when I grabbed his back legs and did the wheelbarrow. <laughs> the old wheelbarrow. He's like, <laughs> my mother's going, put him down. He doesn't like it. No, he loves it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I sat in the back of the car. That was my area. And when you're a little kid, parents give you these little toys to play with in the car. They think it's going to keep you quiet. My favorite toy when I was a kid, a little plastic phone. I used to love this thing. And I love when my father would talk on the phone. He's driving, trying to have a nice day. I'm slamming the phone in his head. Well, it's for you, Dad. It's not for me. Leave me alone. It's for you. That's when they threaten you. Don't make me come back. So I get angry. I put my arm through my back window, through his front window, cover his eyes while I'm driving. <laughs> I'll get my foot under the seat, get those springs going. How you doing, Dad? <laughs> and my mother's so nervous in the car. She's on what I call idiot patrol. All day she's looking out the window, yelling at my father, get away from that idiot. Why do you drive so close to an idiot like that? 
that whole family looks like a bunch of idiots. I'm still going, it's for you, Dad. Now he's threatening, if you don't stop it, I will kill us all. And we had a four-door car with electric windows. When you're a kid, you can't play with the windows because they tell you that is not a toy. When you're a kid, that is a toy. <laughs> And we had a four-door car, and you can't put the locks on the door because they tell you, God forbid you fall out. Then what are we going to do? <laughs> the sickest thing I ever did, my folks are doing like 70 on the highway. I opened the back door, slammed it, then hid behind the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> my father's hair went up in the air. He's going, he fell out. <laughs> my mother's going, pull over, will you need it? They pull off the highway like 100 miles an hour. They look over the seat. I'm down there. I go, it's for you, Dad. <laughs> I love you. Uh-oh. <laughs> and when we go visit my parents' friends, when my mother would get upset at me at other people's houses, she would not yell at me in front of other people. She would do that silent scream, just look at me across her way. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't hear you. I think the thing that got my folks most nervous is absolutely true. When I was 15 years old, that's when I started going out of the house at night. And before you go out at night, though, mothers tell you when to be home to the minute. She'd look at me, all right, Mark, you go out, but I want you home at uh, 10.30, you hear me? Now, what time did I say? No, I want to hear the words before you go out. That's right, that doesn't mean 10.31, or 10.32, and the whole family's going, or 10.33, or 10.34. Even the dog is going, woof, 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 woof. And if you're not home by 10.30, mothers will wait up for you. I remember one time she told me to be home at 10.30. I walked in at 4 o'clock in the morning. But after 1 o'clock, you just say to yourself, the heck with it now. I don't live there anymore. Because she told me, and I hope by 10.30, don't bother coming home. And I would just walk home praying to God. I go, God, please help me work with me one time. Please make sure my mother's asleep. Because if she's up, I will come to visit you very soon. <laughs> And you try to sneak in the house, but at that hour, everything is magnified. Put the key in the door, <laughs> You creep in and then you hear, get in here, <laughs> now. And I swear, I looked up, I said, I asked you to help me one rotten thing, and I heard this voice say, she would not go to sleep. <laughs> this is a very powerful woman. Good luck, young man. See you very soon. <laughs> And my mother would just sit in the chair like, get in here, do you know what time it is? It's after four o'clock, now where were you? With your friends, people don't have friends at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Crazy people have friends at four o'clock. You don't see me parading around the streets at four o'clock, do you? Now what is wrong with you? <laughs> Nothing, something is definitely wrong with you. Nobody acts the way you act. Your friends don't treat their mothers the way you treat me. Look at me when I'm talking to you. I am your mother. Don't mimic me. I have had it up to here with your shenanigans. I don't even know what shenanigan is. What, you give me orders, I should go to sleep? I haven't slept since the day you were born. That's why I look like this. I was a pretty woman a long time ago. Now I lay in that bed with my eyes popping out of my head, I don't know what's going on. You know, if you're trying to kill me, you're doing a very good job. Now this is my house. You don't make it leave. Where do you think you're going? You're not going anywhere. If anyone leaves, it's going to be me. I'll pack. I'll get out of here right now because I've had it with you and your father. And when he gets home, I'll tell him. <laughs> and in my house, my mother does all the talking. My father just agrees. They've been married so long, my mother actually sucked the brain out of my father's head. <laughs> I'll just walk around the house going, just do what she says. <laughs> Oh, for God's sakes, do what she says. I gotta lay down for a couple weeks. Maybe get another job. I gotta get out of here. 